Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness. And in today's video, we're asking the question, does stretching help with muscle soreness? Uh, specifically, that means delayed onset muscle soreness, which is the kind of soreness you would feel after a really good workout. The next day, you might feel a little sore. So should you be stretching maybe before your exercise, maybe after your exercise? And will that prevent the feeling of next day soreness. We're going to find out in today's episode. But hey, real quick, before we get started, make sure you like this video. It really does help me out. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell for notifications and make sure you stick around to the end of the video because if you cut off halfway, you're going to think that I am trashing stretching, but I'm not. And there's a reason why you can stretch uh, if you so choose. And I'm going to explore that at the very end of the video. So stick around. So does stretching help with muscle soreness? No, it doesn't. Stretching does not prevent delayed onset muscle soreness, uh, at least not according to this review article. So let's see what this review article is all about. Quick to the research. <laughs> Today, we've got a good one. We're looking at a Cochrane review called Stretching to Prevent or Reduce Muscle Soreness After Exercise, a review. Um, this is a really good review article. This is on its second iteration. So sometimes Cochrane reviews, they will do a review and then they will revisit the same review. Uh, uh, several years later, because there may be new research that they need to take into account. So what they were doing is looking at randomized controlled trials where they were trying to see if people stretched before or after exercise, um, did it help reduce their sensations of soreness the next day uh, or, you know, in the following days after exercise. And uh, it is really important to note that the reason this is a great review is because it came from Cochrane Library. And Cochrane reviews are easily some of the most highly respected scientific publications on the planet. These guys have an in incredible track record of putting out extremely high quality uh, peer reviewed research. Uh, for I don't even know how long, but they are very trustworthy. That said, there is always going to be some kind of flaws with any research, no matter how good. Okay, so they eliminate as much bias as they possibly can. And yet, because of the type of research, for example, they, they cannot do a double blind study with this type of research because you can't blind somebody to the fact that they are or are not stretching. There's no placebo for that, right? So there's some inherent flaws, but the, these are the most respectable um, ways to do a review is, uh, is Cochrane. So uh, if you're going to trust anybody, trust them. So delayed onset muscle soreness, again, the soreness that you're going to get after working out usually uh, the next day or so, um, especially with eccentric exercise. So a lot of people stretch in order to reduce that soreness. Let's find out if it works. So what do we use to believe? Why, why would you even think that? Why would you think that stretching helps with muscle soreness? Now, I, this makes me think of yoga. In yoga classes all the time, you, people are spouting off, you know, things, theories about health that sound very plausible. They sound scientific, but they are not scientific. And this would be one really great example. So we used to believe at some point that um, stretching, I'm going to kind of read from this quote here. The practice of stretching to prevent muscle soreness was encouraged by early investigators of muscle soreness who thought that unaccustomed exercise caused muscle spasm. Muscle spasm was believed to impede blood flow to the muscle, causing ischemic pain and further spasm. So they thought that stretching the muscle was thought to restore blood flow to the muscle and interrupt the pain, spasm, pain cycle. The, the muscle spasm theory of muscle soreness has since been discredited in 1986, by the way. But 
the practice of stretching persists. So once a theory enters the public sphere, it's in fitness classes, it's in yoga classes, and a bunch of people who are not trained scientists, they are not academics, they do not read research, they are not experts in their subject matter, they get a hold of this information, they teach their students, their students are even worse off and less academic, and then they just teach their students until we have a public um, myth about health. And it never gets checked, it never gets verified. And that is rampant in yoga and fitness communities, okay? So this is why it's so important to look at current research. So this sounds believable, but it is not accurate. What about modern theories? What do we think might be happening now? So maybe the initial event is probably mechanical disruption of sarcomeres, which are the contractile units of muscle fibers. Um, so essentially there's some damage of some of the proteins in your muscles. Okay, most people kind of think that anyway. And this causes swelling of the damaged muscle fibers and then it gets inflamed and then it um, cascades into essentially it pisses your nerves off. That's a nociceptor. So it makes your nerves angry. And then you feel pain. All right, that's reasonable. Important to note here, they're saying muscle soreness is usually only experienced when the muscle contracts or is stretched. So that's interesting. Muscle soreness usually only experienced when the muscle is contracting or stretched. So why then would stretching help the muscle soreness. That doesn't make any sense then. In light of this new modern theory where stretching induces soreness, why would stretching help soreness? You catch my drift? One other thing to note, um, I don't have a picture of it in this slideshow, but um, they go on to talk about how it may be likely that we feel the sensation of soreness because our muscle spindles, which are responsible for detecting um, the stretch on a muscle. So muscle spindles detect how long your muscle is, essentially. And so if you're stretching your muscle, you activate a muscle spindle and it sends information up, you know, through your spinal cord, etc. And they essentially get really sensitive. This is later on in the article they talked about this. So you become really, really sensitive to stretch, so much so that it actually creates discomfort and soreness, pain. Okay. Um, so therefore, stretching would not alleviate that. However, interestingly, uh, and stick around to the end of the video, I'll talk more about this, but stretching m might actually help if you do it long term, but we'll get to that at the end of the video. Anyway, what did this article find? What, do, what did we actually find in this review? Well, when the review was first published in 2007, um, essentially they found that stretching soon before or soon after exercise does not produce important reductions in muscle soreness in the few days following exercise. That conclusion remains unchanged in this update of the review. Remember, they did the review once in 2007, then a bunch of new race research came out, so they redid the review in 2011, and nothing changed. The primary analysis indicated that stretching has near zero effects on soreness. It doesn't help. Before I go any deeper, um, a quick thing to think about is how much improvement would be significant. So they called it near zero effects. How much would you need to change a person's perception of soreness for it to actually mean something to you? If if I asked you today, let's say you had muscle soreness because you had a big workout yesterday, and let's say you told me, oh, today, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's about a five out of, out of 10. And then let's say we did some kind of intervention, some kind of treatment on your muscle soreness, and it was supposed to reduce your muscle soreness. And then you said, and I asked you again, okay, how about now? How, how is your muscle soreness now? And you told me that it was a two out of 10. That is a pretty big um, improvement from a two to a five. However, 
let's say, um, conversely, let's say, again, we start off with a 5 out of 10 uh, muscle soreness, and then you did stretching. And let's say we improved it to a 4.6, whatever. Is that, does that actually make any difference? I mean, would you really be able to tell the difference between a 5 out of 10 and a 4.6 out of 10? Probably not. You probably wouldn't even be able to tell the difference between a 5 and a 4. 5 and a 3, we're starting to say, okay, maybe you made a change. That might be a meaningful change. Between a 5 and a 2, between a 5 and a 1, if I reduced it to a 0 out of 10 muscle soreness, now we've made a huge difference. So what did we actually find in the research? Well, we only reduced muscle soreness. We did reduce muscle soreness. Stretching did reduce muscle soreness, but it only reduced it four points on a hundred point scale. That is not significant. It did improve, but it didn't improve enough that if I were to ask you and you were to be honest, I don't think you'd notice. I don't think you'd notice at all. So it's important to realize that sometimes you look at, um, if you look in the research, you say, well, but the estimate said that they did reduce muscle soreness. And it was statistically significant. It is statistically significant, but it is not clinically significant because you would not be able to actually tell the difference between a 46 out of 100 muscle soreness versus a 50 out of 100 muscle soreness. There's no way you would be able to really tell the difference between those two things, okay? But I want to stretch. Of course, some people just like stretching. So if you want to stretch, you, and you're telling me, probably you're thinking, well, if I stretch right now and I have muscle soreness, it's going to help. You're wrong. Okay. Yeah, this is not talking about immediate effects. This is talking about the big picture of if you stretch before or after your workout, will you be sore tomorrow? This is not asking, well, what, do, okay, now tomorrow comes and ah, damn, I've got sore muscles. Now should I stretch? That was, that's a different question. Okay. So if you have muscle soreness and then you stretch, well, it may be that uh, two things might happen. Well, so the bottom quote here says, some evidence suggests that once muscle soreness has developed, stretching may provide a transient relief of muscle soreness. So essentially what you do is uh, stretching is a sensation. It's a low level sensation and you bombard your spinal cord with a bunch of information. And it basically, I don't want to explain pain gate theory, but if you want to Google it, pain gate theory. Okay, there you go. Anyway, the simple version is you bombard your spinal cord with um, information. It gets confused and then you don't feel pain for a, a small window of time, like 10 or 15 minutes. OK, so if you are sore and you stretch, it might temporarily make you feel better. OK, it won't make you feel better in an hour or two hours or six hours or tomorrow, but it might make you feel better right now for about 10 minutes. OK, the other thing is, and this is interesting, well, maybe there's a possibility that um, stretching may be more useful for people who have very short muscles. In other words, they're not very flexible um, because if the feeling of muscle soreness is exacerbated by muscle spindles, which are responsible for feeling when you're stretching, if you are not very flexible, then your muscle spindles are going to be very sensitive to any stretch at all. Whereas if you are more flexible, then your muscle spindles will not be as sensitive. They will not produce as much of a feeling of soreness and you will have less soreness generally when you work out in the future. But you have to dedicate weeks or months or years to, uh, to becoming flexible, so weeks or months or years. And if you generally improve your flexibility overall, then your sensation of muscle soreness down the road when you work out in a month or two months or six months or in a year might be less than if you had been less flexible going into the workout. 
Does that make sense? Because your muscle spindles, which are responsible for feeling stretch, are less sensitive. Cool? I hope that makes sense. So in other words, my point is, if you want to stretch, if it feels good, do it. That's fine. But it's not, if you're, if the reason you're stretching is because you think that, oh, you, man, I really don't want to be sore tomorrow. So I should stretch before I exercise or after I exercise. I don't want to be sore tomorrow. So I should stretch. That's wrong. That is just not, that. It, that is clearly not true. Okay. So uh, there are good reasons to stretch. There are also stupid reasons to stretch right? And there are other more useful things you can do with your time anyway. So uh, research is meant to be liberating. It is not meant to tell you that you're wrong and that you're a bad person. It is meant to encourage us to grow and change and adapt our yoga practice and adapt our fitness uh, programs to incorporate better information. Um, and reminder to please always try to challenge your biases, challenge your assumptions, challenge your teachers, learn more, dig into the research, embrace science, Science, embrace change. Thank you for watching. I'll see you the next time. Please, hey, like this video and subscribe. Do it. Do it now. See you next time.